I hope this works. Yeah, so we went, went want you to move a little bit closer. There we go. guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I'm here in Beverly, Massachusetts at Good Mojo Tattoos with my sister Carly, who is an incredible artist, illustrator, tattoo artist, all around uh, amazing creative person. And um, I'm here today to interview, 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 her, oh, her, interview her about her experience applying to and putting together a portfolio for art school. Um, and this was something that I had mentioned in a previous video and a lot of you guys sounded really interested in it. So um, here we are today with Carly and she's been kind enough to take some time out of her busy schedule to answer questions for us. So I'm gonna you know, read the questions like I do. And uh, Carly's going to talk some talking. Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, um, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself? I know I summarized it, but do you want to say, like, I don't know who you are, what inspires you, what kind of materials you like to use? Just like a broad overview. Um, my name is Carly Manasco. <laughs> I, um, I went to MassArt from 2007 to 2011. Um, graduated with an illustration degree that I don't need for my job here, <laughs> um, but it's been really helpful to have. Um, I really like to paint in acrylics and acrylic wash, but lately, um, and because of how I work here, um, uh, I use a lot of like microns and mm -hmm. color pencils and Copics. lately Copic markers. I love them. Yes. Well, you're among friends. Um, how and why did you decide to go to art school? You mentioned you went to Mass Art, but how did you make that decision? And why did you do it? I um, I knew that I wanted a career in art, like 100%. Mm -hmm. I wanted a career in art. Yeah. Um, I had a game plan of uh, like talking to mom and dad, and they were like, you're going to be a tech first. And I was like, oh, okay. oh pharmacy tech. Yeah, yeah. I Carly yeah. worked at the hospital in high school. So I, yeah. they wanted me to complete like a, like an x-ray tech or a dental hygienist program, like a two-year thing, and then pay my way through art school. And I remember filling out those applications and just like sobbing. I didn't know you filled out the applications. Yeah, I filled whoa, out the applications whoa. and I was sobbing. And mom was like, you don't have to go to tech. <laughs> they're like ah. anyway they were concerned they were concerned um and then you so yeah then yeah. i was like and, and carly also in addition to getting into mass art carly also got into risd you can say better now sure okay i mean yeah. i had my heart set on risd and risd actually required a different um oh different type of portfolio, different type of portfolio. okay they well, can you show us your art school portfolio yes Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had Rhonda help me. Mm -hmm. Rhonda is a friend, a mutual friend of ours, who um, is a graduate of Rhode Island School of Design. She was in their metalsmithing program, but I think she went in painting, maybe. Maybe. So she knew about putting together portfolios. Yeah. Right. Yeah, she did. She knew. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I basically wanted. I knew that I had to cover like my greatest strengths and. Um, like the best for potential mm -hmm. um, but I really didn't have that much I'd taken a uh, North Shore um, a community college drawing class yes okay and um, lady was like you probably could have gone into drawing too and I was like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but then I was like oh why didn't I go into drawing too so in that one we made like portraits and stuff this is from drawing from the drawing this class is from the North drawing Shore. class okay. at North Shore um, and how old were you for this? I was yeah. 17. 17. Um, <laughs> you can see they all kind of have a similar face structure. Yeah, and it's like the typical pose, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're all looking towards their left. Yeah. Three quarter view. <laughs> that guy's my favorite. He was definitely in there. Yeah, he has some attitude. Um, it's like a pretty Elvis. <laughs> and then, not that Elvis isn't pretty, um, but so RISD wanted, oh, yeah. um, they wanted like a, a portrait style, um, like of a of a figure, mm -hmm. um, and a landscape in her outer, 
and then a bicycle. I don't have the bicycle. Whoa, me, right yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's to show your technical yes. grind, drawing skills. Yeah. So that was that was Michaeli with like her weird foreshortened knees. Yes, a um, friend of Carly's. Yeah. And then this was my inner landscape. Oh yeah, at home. At uh, home. Who's that? No one. No one. Okay, random person. Random person. I like that move. That one boob, yeah. that, like here, it's coming out of an arm right here. Yeah. yeah. I. So this would be to show, like, you know, your grasp that of I have a grasp of reality. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned something when you were saying putting it together that you could fit, they wanted you to show um, potential. Yeah. So what can you talk about what that means? Um. So like. Maybe they're your favorite sketches, but they're not like a hundred percent finished. Uh, so this could be stuff from a sketchbook. Yeah. Okay. It could be, but it like you want it to be good. You don't just want it to be a bunch of doodles. Um, you want whatever you put in to look like there's care. Um, I found this. I did not. This is not the Michael Bolo, Whoa. But this is from. This has to be like circa 19. Okay, I was going to say like 1999. Yeah, so I was. <laughs> we were um, really into drawing fairies. fairies and like with their whole kit. So it would be like a fairy with a, you know, one coordinated outfit, but then she also had like her battle. Her winter outfit. Her winter her outfit, and then like armor, her stuff yeah. for hunting and war. And <laughs> <laughs> so are there any other pieces that you want to um, show? Uh, no, so like a drawing of a still life. Um, they can be really boring, but they can also like show your observational skills, mm -hmm. which are very necessary. It's everything from fabric to glass, and you can see like I don't have much variation in texture. <laughs> yeah, but that's probably why they were asking but, for different yeah, things, yeah. right? To show, okay, to yeah. show that you can understand different surfaces. So so for RISD you had to do a portrait, an in, interior landscape, and um, a, a technical, technical drawing. drawing of a bicycle. Um, and a technical, sometimes like a bicycle is a good example, but sometimes that would be like tools or um, something with like lots of little intricate parts that are all machine made. That I was interested in like character design. Mm -hmm. um, and you were really into manga at the time, right? Yes. Yeah. Or like comics in general. Yeah. Um, and so I'd have like different views of the same character. Um, Very well developed. Um, I I try to show as well developed as I could. Um, so you were clearly though more interested at this point in like in the figures as oh, opposed absolutely. to in the environments. Yeah. yeah. So this is just a question a lot of people have asked, which is how can I put together a good portfolio for art school? How should I pick which of my pieces to include? How large does the portfolio need to be? How many pieces should you include? So we've already touched on some yeah. of this, but if you want to expound. Um, I'd say a good portfolio is anywhere between like 16 to 24 pieces. Okay. Um, once you like go past 30, that's that's just a lot. And okay. And like flipping through the pages. Your art school may have a specific number in mind. Um, and in that case, just like, Draw, 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 draw. Everything. Like if you don't have enough stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so in summary, take 16 to 24 pieces, showing a good variety, um, and some art schools may have specific requirements about the types of work to include or the number of pieces, in which case, do that. <laughs> Definitely. And if you're if you're applying to like an art school but you want to get into the film program, like that's gonna have its own of portfolio requirements. Okay, yeah. And in, in that case, I think you should still stick to your broadest range of work and your best or personal favorites. So like if you can have a nice balance of those, um, I feel like that, that's what makes a solid portfolio. Okay. Um, do you have any other sort of general tips on portfolios or art school, applying to, choosing one? Um, if you're making like a physical portfolio, it's best to remember that you linger on the right side. So, uh, if you're right-handed, no, most people. Oh, really? Linger on the right too? side. Okay, yeah. interesting. Um, oh, because, because we, that's how right. I read. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes arranging can be very important because I wouldn't want to put um, 
either of these really dark pieces next to write something like this. And these are like similar color schemes, go well together. And I wouldn't want, um, I wouldn't want this, right. even though it's impressive in terms of color, to outshadow this or this, right, right, right. because they each have their moments that um, are really nice. That are really more nice. That I like. Too, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and if you're telling a narrative, be sure to like keep your narrative in a chronological. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, again, some more color palettes are grouped together. Um, so this is from, this is all this stuff is, from in art school, right? Yeah, this yeah. is my senior year portfolio. Okay. So just um, like a comparison from where she was when she applied to where this ended up. Like, yeah, yeah. MassArt has a specific um, award that, like, that I ended up getting. But yeah, I got, I think I got an award for um, most, like, artistic progression. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. These ones were etchings, um, and then I colored them to Kelly. Oh, cool. Yeah, I love this one. Yeah. I have this one here. Yeah. Yeah. And then, jungle oh, jungle. Yeah. and group like with like, um, okay, so it's like you have a bunch of um, still lifes and charcoal, and you have a bunch of digital things, you don't want to mix them. You right. want them to be. Separate. So the put the charcoals together, the right. chains together. The you want it to all have a good flow. You okay. don't want anyone to be jarred. And should you start like, where should you put your best stuff? On the right hand side. On the right hand side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's if, a very. If you're assembling part. a physical portfolio, you should put it on the right hand side. And in um, the front, or towards the back, or in the middle, like. Again, that's up to you. Like in this case, I really liked this one, but I wanted you to be able to see these two. So I put these two on the right hand side and this one on the left. Mm -hmm. So you would still look at this one because it's more impressive. I feel like it's more yeah. impressive. Mm -hmm. But you would give these the same consideration. Okay, right, right, right. Um, how did you become a Um. I decided that I hated freelance illustration first and didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and then through the encouragement of several close friends and family um, who believed in me, they were like, you should go for tattooing. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I approached a shop where I'd been tattooed before and asked them if they were looking for an apprentice and um, showed them my uh, portfolio, my graduation portfolio. And, um, and even though I didn't have tattoo experience, they were very impressed by that. Okay. Um, and, um, and then they hired me to apprentice, and it was like at least six months before I even started tattooing. Um, yeah, you had like the fake skin, right? That yeah, had, yeah, that was awful. <laughs> yeah, that was really bad. Um, yeah. Do you like it? Tattooing? Mm -hmm. Yes. How is it different than freelance illustration? Um, instead of making like a logo for someone or um, a label for a product or a spot illustration, mm -hmm. you are making something for someone that they're putting on their body, um, that they're treasuring, that they're getting for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 300,000 men in Boston have a like little share mark tattoo, but it means something to each of those 3,000 men, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's like way more personal. Yeah, it's so yeah. much more personal. Um, and it's not like every tattoo that is about someone's grandmother who raised them and just passed away. Mm -hmm. It's not like everything's a memorial or everything's like a really big piece. Um, sometimes it's just things that people like, like a little Lego or a flower. But there's or, still some amount of symbolism, like, yeah. no matter what it is. Like, okay. And then it's like it's on you and you end up loving it. Or, yeah, know. no, that totally makes sense. All right, um, anything else? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. <laughs> By us, I mean me. you. <laughs> um, yeah, this was awesome. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. You're so great. Yeah. Oh, thanks. All right. Bye, guys. See you next time.
Yay! Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Jacka. Okay. Ooh, I'm feeling very sexy. <laughs> 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 